Hello there. In this video I want to show how georeferencing works. It's a, a daunting task to do it right and to do it accurately. Um, this video is not about that because you need a feeling for it. You need to develop this over time, you get better at it. This is just about to show how it's done. So uh, first of all, let's uh, take this picture here. If I move it here, there's nothing visible here. I know this picture actually represents a part in Citicam proper, but it doesn't show up. The reason is, it cannot because there's no G-reference information of it. So let's delete it, remove the layer. Uh, then this is detail two. I want to show an OpenStreetMap in the uh, JOSM. This is the application we use for uploading. And um, let's open that file here as a regular file, as a regular image file, detail two, open. So now we got it opened here, and you can see here there's a little red button, which means the location where it claims I made the picture is here. The, that is as accurate as my camera works. It's actually on the opposite side of the road. But as you can see, this information, now I have this information, it, it's hard for me to figure out what belongs where. So I have here a house number, number 23. Well, where does that belong to, number 23? Which building is that here? I, I wouldn't know. So how can I make this visible for me, where the number 23 is, 24, 21? That's, that's what we're going to show you how georeferencing works. Um, we can also load it as an image, import it as an image. Then it shows this photo as a layer. So it doesn't show the location where I made it, it shows it as a layer. We go back to detail 2. Oh, no world file font. It cannot import it. Okay, why? Because there's no georeference uh, data to it. Great, so we go back to QGIS. QGIS is a great help for us. We go here to layer, then we go to the georeferencer. Then we open this file. Uh, that is city cam proper detail 2. We open that one. Here we can now get the picture. And this is now uh, the actual georeferencing. I use linear because the photo is pretty much okay. It's not really distorted. If it's very much distorted, you got you got to twist a bit. Again, it's feeling what you need to develop. For a photo with big distortions, you would take polynomial two or three. Um, this is not so heavily distorted, so just stick it linear. And then you gotta figure out this point, that point, other points. Where where are these points here on the map? Now you can use the OpenStreetMap and try to georeference against that. Uh, you can also fire up the Bing and you try to georeference against the Bing. But the best thing we have is actually the data from the city assessor office. So we go to plugin. Uh, now we go to vector, quick OSM. That's a plugin you need to install, quick OSM. And here we say again in Baggio. And in Baggio we want data from the city assessor office. Let's get the barangay boundaries because here in this picture, these are the barangay boundaries we're looking at. So let's get these barangay boundaries from the city assessor office. They are very accurate, about the most accurate data you can get. And we're going to georeference against the most accurate data we got. Great, we got that. Then we disable the area, we disable the nodes, we don't need the nodes, we just need the boundary. And I do not recognize the boundaries very well. I always like dark red for that. So I pick here dark red, and say apply, okay. Good, that's great. Now I see here a angle, which I also see here. So I'm going to pick this, and then I say from map canvas, then I pick this angle. Now I have a point here and a point here, which means now I georeference those two points. I georeference the point here on my photo against this point here with the geodata. And then I find another point, which is then 
uh, here below this point here. Then I say here again from canvas, that's in this point, okay. Then I try to figure out another point. Um, what is a nice point? Here, this, this on corner here is a nice point. That would be roughly here. Again, I'm not going to do this exact now because I just want to show the, the concept. Then if you imaginary think this line through, you come somewhere here. That would then be this angle, okay? Uh, below here, where the barangay, this is the barangay boundary here on the street. It's exactly above the river, so we select this point, then we roughly select also here the edge of the street above that point, okay? Now we got a few points, let's see this the point I hold that is a sharp edge we don't have that here we got here point here 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 there one point let's try another point here in the south um, doo -doo 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 -doo. if this is Manat then it's that then that is Julio then that is De Leon okay Julio is pretty good visible let's pick that as reference point. Here we got to consider the, the distortion from the satellite because the satellite is not looking like this, it's looking on an angle. Uh, we got six points now, that should do it. I, I would actually be happy if I could find a point here. So if this is a city camp proper barangay hall, this is one lot, this is another lot that's roughly there. Yeah, let's pick that point too roughly again i'm not doing it accurately now because this is just proof of concept okay now we got another point and then we say run we georeference that um then we say okay we close it save the points yeah close save the points uh as you can see now it's uh roughly georeference against the data from the city assessor office and what we want to know is that we can actually determine which house number belongs to which house. So we go to our basic open street map software which is JOSM, the image, we import the image because now we got a georeference TIFF image which is great if we got that. Uh, so then we got this here and now we say we put this over the Bing layer but under the data layer so we see the data above it as you can see, this one is number 152, and this is also 152, but this is also 152, so you see, we're already very accurate here. Um, here, this I mapped already, and found out it's 124. I went on the street, I did their field surveying, and you can see it matches. Here with field surveying, I got 125, here 126, here 127. You also can see the edge here, like that. So the field surveying confirms that we georeference the data very well. Uh, we can also go on the other side, 29, 29. I did not get other information. Uh, here I got 33 from field surveying. It confirms this is 33. So as you can see, it's not exact, but it's good enough to figure out the addresses. So if you want to add another address, we can just select this one here. Let's say we copy here everything, then we go here, here we pass everything. We just need to figure out that it's properly done. So there's city camp prop, that's good. The city camp proper, actually the addresses, this is a quarter. We, we don't use village anymore as designation for barangays. We use quarters as designation for barangay. Then the house number there. We can determine that 32 from the georeference -ref image. Uh, the building, I actually know this. If you don't know it, you cannot do that, but I know it's a residential building. It's just a house, so I map it as house. Uh, the source, I can say, actually we used the Maxar imagery from Bing, and we used the um, Baran Guy Hall. We got this information from them, so in the source we have to put that. Uh, the survey date, actually there's no survey. If there's no survey, 
then it's a check date. And the check date is 2023, 05, and today it's 07, it's 7 May. And for any other buildings we're going to do, we just copy past this now. Oops, I hit the wrong buttons, Control C. This is then number 31. So the first one is always a bit more. This becomes the number 30. And this is the 28. This is the 27. Yeah, we can go on with this, but uh, to keep the video short, now we're just going to upload uh, duplicate house numbers. Yeah, that is that happens in the Philippines because um, quite a lot of house numbering is per Purok and not per street name, which means you get double house numbers. Um, so it's very well possible that somewhere here, there's also City Camp Road, but this is City Camp Central. Ah, see here are the double house numbers. So City Camp Central has to City Camp Road the number, the same number, uh, City Camp Proper has at City Camp Road. Well, the thing is, this warning warns me that on the same road, there's twice the same house number. That is because it's made by Europeans, and in Europe this does not happen. You'd never have two house numbers on the same road. In the Philippines it can happen because house numbering is done per Purok or per Barangay. And that's totally fine. This is just a warning. You can actually disable this warning. Um, so there's nothing wrong with the warning. Just skip the warning, ignore it. And just say adding another addresses. So any other map knows you're adding map ad addresses. Upload. And now the rest of the world knows it. So Grab, Facebook, Microsoft, everyone now knows it. And this is the beautiful thing of uh, georeferencing. If you have a map like this from the barangay with the house numbers, you can very quickly and very simply, you can make your first uh, georeference image. Then you make your first building with the data from that image. And then it's just copy pass. You can see once I'm done with the first, it's just really just copy pass, copy pass, copy pass. It just changes the number. And you can do literally hundreds per hour then. And uh, yeah, as you can see, even if I don't work accurate, it's accurate enough to do this kind of work to actually determine which house number belongs to what building. And at this point, I hope you understand how georeferencing works, how you can work with uh, photographs, um, better is of course if you scan it using a flatbed scanner um, but the main thing is that you know just the concept how it works how do you do georeferencing how you can load this information then here in JOSM I showed you about the import image uh, functionality that's another plugin um, and then how you can quickly copy past that information over multiple buildings and just upload it and it's done so at this point I, I hope uh, everyone understood it if not i'm always available for questions you can contact me on facebook hike and map you can contact me on uh, telegram channels hike and map um, the city also has my private phone number my whatsapp every city official who's interested can just contact me that's totally fine you can share my number uh, my private number, you can share it as long as it's under city officials. It's totally fine to share it. Any questions you have about mapping, just contact me. And then, uh, yeah, I wish you good luck with that. <laughs>